All right, fig growers, this is Ross the Fig Boss. In today's video, we're talking about 11 mistakes that fig growers commonly make. And I wanted to share with you guys these 11 mistakes so that you can avoid them completely and have a successful fig growing season. And I've also, by the way, created a companion guide to this video here on my blog, figboss.com. I would highly recommend you guys go to the blog or you know, go to the description, I'll put a link there, and you can see this article that I've written, which is, in my opinion, I put a lot of work into this, and I could have even possibly written an entire book with the amount of information that's just in this one article. I also created a companion poster to this guide, or to this video, and you can also check that out on Teespring. You can order that, have it shipped to your house, and hang it on your wall. So quite exciting stuff. I think this video, to be honest with you, again, is, is worth its weight in gold because I've made all the mistakes. You know, even the experts, even the best fig growers make mistakes and that's how we learn as growers. We make mistakes, we figure out how we made the mistake, what happened, and then we don't repeat that mistake. If I'm gonna give you guys all the mistakes I've made or that you can make, that I foresee you guys can make, and you can just then completely avoid all of the mistakes that I've put in, that's years of work that you now are benefiting from. So I think, to be honest, this video is great. If you love this video and you wanna see more content like this, hit that subscribe button for me right now. Hit that like button for me right now. I'd greatly appreciate it. So anyway, let's get on to some of those mistakes. Some of them are based on containers. I think there's just inherently more problems when we grow fig trees in containers, but some of these mistakes can also occur just in general with all the fig trees that we grow, whether, whether or not they're growing in containers or whether or not they're growing in the ground. One of the biggest mistakes with containers is actually not feeding them. Um, I feed every single potted tree I have every year. They need a regular fertilization schedule. And one of the easiest ways that I do this, so I, I kind of make it foolproof for myself, is I just give them a slow release fertilizer here. That's exactly what this is. It's just Florican. You can buy this stuff at Home Depot. It's called Osmocote. It's just those little beads that you guys may have seen. It's a well-balanced fertilizer that covers, covers all your basic micronutrients and just in general is gonna give you a fertilizer over time, a light dose of fertilizer every time you water. And that way you don't have to really fertilize from that point on. You just do one application of that stuff and you're done. Now everybody has a different fertilizer you know, belief. If you ask you know, 10 fig growers, they're gonna tell you that they use 10 different fer uh, fertilizers. I think what's important is that we just use it use something, cover all your micronutrients, cover all your macronutrients. Hopefully you have a well-balanced fertilizer. <laughs> the net is <laughs> blowing in the air there. Um, and so I think that's just the main message. The other big thing I find with the containers is that we don't really water them well. Um, a lot of people either underwater or overwater. During the summer when it's 90 degrees outside, figs need a lot of water. Per five gallons of soil, they could need about a half a gallon to a full gallon of water every day, believe it or not. The in-ground figs, if they're really well established, could actually use about five gallons a day, if, especially if you're growing them for commercial production. Some trees that are smaller in the ground may only need a gallon. Um, and so in general, I would highly recommend using mulch, especially for your in-ground figs. That goes a huge long way, especially for you guys in desert-like climates. Um, the other thing I would say though with the potted figs, and this is the biggest mistake I see besides not fertilizing them, is actually just overwatering them. Now I know I said that it, when it's 90 they need a lot of water, but if it's not warm outside, if the figs are just waking up or if they're dormant, they don't have a lot of leaves on them, you could very easily kill them because they are quite susceptible to root rot. Figs have a very fibrous root system that goes outwards. Um, and so those little roots are very susceptible to fungal problems like root rot. So if we overwater, we create anaerobic conditions in the soil, which lead to the proliferation of root rot. We kill the roots, we killed our tree. So that's a big one there. One of the other things, and we've talked about this kind of to death this spring, 
is actually opening up the canopies of our trees. This is definitely a mistake. Having too dense of a canopy can spell disaster because if the trees are too dense, we have too many trees growing close, close together like I have, but if we're not positioning them well, or maybe our trees are, have too many branches in a very small area, we won't see fruit set. And so this is probably the biggest reason I get probably a month or two from now when people are like, hey Ross, I see you're fruiting all of your fig trees. They all have fruit on them, by the way, right now. And so people are always like, well, how is he getting fruit and why am I not? My tree is big and beautiful. It grows really well. Ross, why is my fig tree not fruiting? The most common reason is a lack of sunlight. And it's not just a lack of sunlight where the tree is located, but also internally. So what I do is I stake every single tree. I use limb bending, um, limb spreaders. And so I open up the center. I try to get all my fig trees the appropriate amount of sunlight because there is that requirement needed to set the fruit buds. It is pretty much exclusively with the sun. Now, obviously we need a healthy tree and so basic requirements like fertilizer and water. But beyond that, if we have a healthy tree, you should be seeing fruit set, assuming you get the light requirement met. One of the other things I think, and this is a huge mistake that people make, is actually pruning too much. And so this could be the other reason why you're not seeing fruit set. And that if, whether it's an in-ground tree, whether it's a pot of tree, it doesn't matter. If we are pruning off the apical and lateral buds, the higher points on the tree, the higher buds, these are the buds that are, in, that are in the right hormonal balance. They have the ability to fruit much easier. If we remove these buds, we encourage our fig trees to be in a vegetative state. The balance of hormones shifts. And so now we shift towards growing and not towards fruiting. We want the opposite to occur. And the only real way we can help our fig trees fruit better is actually with a lack of pruning by preserving these apical buds, which are the highest, most growth tip here on the branches. And the buds here that are slightly below that, that typically are quite protruding and have a lot of energy within them and have that right hormonal balance that we look for. So if we're gonna be doing a lot of winter pruning, or if we're gonna be doing actually, we're not gonna be protecting our fig trees in the winter time, as some of you guys probably live in a zone six, five, seven, we need to protect our fig trees in those zones. And so if you're not seeing the winter protection, what's gonna end up happening is they're gonna die all the way to the ground or they're gonna lose those apical and lateral buds that I mentioned, and they're gonna to have to then re-sprout from a lower height. And what ends up inevitably happening is this hormonal imbalance and the fig trees grow too quickly. They have a very wide node spacing between the nodes, between the leaves, and that is a surefire sign your fig tree is just not gonna fruit. So that's a really big mistake there. I think people just absolutely love to make. One of the other things that happens actually in the spring um, is late frosts. And so if you're trying to get your fig tree off to a nice head start to the season, I commend you for that. I think it's totally worth it, especially if you're using greenhouses. I always try to warm up the soil, even for these in-ground figs, try to plant them actually a bit higher above grade. But what can happen is they can wake up a little bit too soon. Maybe some of you guys in actually in Texas, where the weather changes really quite frequently. Um, you know, one day it's 80, the next day it's 40 degrees. You know, those places where you're susceptible to these late frosts, you need to protect your figs. The trees will leaf out in the spring. And if the temperatures in that frost is a hard frost, which is somewhere around 25 degrees, 28 degrees Fahrenheit, you're probably gonna lose a lot of this new growth here that you see. If you lose and damage this new growth, it's interrupting the growing cycle of our fig trees. We need them to grow, we need them to grow healthy in the beginning of the season, because this is where the main crop fruits are formed, on that new growth. So if they're not growing, and they're interrupted in some way, the fig will recover from a late frost, typically, um, but you're just gonna be off to a much worse start to the season, and that in short season climates, like where I'm at in Philadelphia, or places in zone six, seven, uh, and five, four even, 
as well, where we only have about 150 to 180 frost free days, you're really pushing it there by getting hit by a late frost. A light frost, something like a kiss of frost, it really depends on the duration and the intensity. There's a lot of factors that go into a frost and what exactly will take damage. But there's a lot of methods for protecting them in the spring, things like bagging them, putting trash bags around them, putting tarps over them, you know, covering them back up as, as if you guys were had them covered already for the winter time. There's a lot of things that we can do there. Um, one of the other things I think people do a lot with their potted figs actually, this is mistake number five, is actually they forego the dormancy process. All these potted figs, we have the ability to move them elsewhere for the winter time. Now, obviously you could dig up your your in-ground fig, but we're not typically crazy. I hope none of you guys are crazy enough to do that. Um, so we could actually take this potted fig and put them inside for the winter time. Maybe like the sunroom, maybe I can put it in a sunny window. And typically that's just a bad idea I've found. I've done it, I've seen other people do it. A lot of people reach out to me and I always get the same mistake that's made from people and that they end up probably killing their tree because in an indoor environment, there's a lot of pest pressure. That indoor environment, things like spider mites, scale, um, those things really proliferate and actually destroy our fig trees. Outside, there really is no pest pressure. Those pests are pretty much under control. You may also have fungus gnats too, which is another thing that outside we don't really deal with a whole lot. But in these indoor environments, they proliferate and they really mess with our fig trees. Not only that, but if you bring them inside and treat them like a house plant, um, you're, they're house plants, you know? And so if you're not gonna take care of a fruiting plant that requires a lot of energy, a lot of sunlight, a lot of fertilizer, you're basically hurting your tree. And so now in the beginning of the season, you're actually gonna regret it. And so by overwintering it inside and never letting it go dormant, by continuing the growth of it, you could end up actually putting your fig tree backwards rather than forwards. I mean, the whole idea was to, it would be to bring it inside to actually forego the dormancy process to get a bigger and larger tree going into the spring. It just doesn't end up working out like that. I've seen it time and time again, unless you really know what you're doing um, with indoor houseplants. And probably you need to have some you know, additional lighting um, so the other thing I think that happens, we, this is a classic mistake, I do it every year, it's pretty unavoidable I would say, is sunburn. And I'm going to try to find a tree here, I'm sure there's some that came out of the greenhouse and have the sunburn. Um, and so essentially the sunburn hits the leaves, yes, indeed fig trees and plants can get sunburn. Here's a good example of it right there. We also have this leaf back here. And so what the sunburn does is when we transition our plants from a, a low light environment to a higher light environment, the leaves are not adjusted properly to that, trans, to that additional light exposure. And what happens is the leaves burn. And now these leaves actually have and produce, I should say, lower amounts of photosynthesis, lower amounts of energy. If the entire tree or a large portion of the tree gets hit really badly by the sunburn, well then our season in the springtime is actually going to be affected just like an indoor potted plant that instead of going forward like we would like, it's now set back and is kind of behind uh, where it should be now. So this is a common thing when people grow their, their house plants or bring their fig trees inside. Whether, or if you're growing them inside a greenhouse, that's a classic thing that happens to me every time I take them out of the greenhouse. Always have to adjust them to the current light levels, current conditions, so that these trees don't get that sunburn. What actually can happen if it's severe enough, you can defoliate most, if not all, of your tree, which, you know, that's a disaster. That's exactly what we don't want to do. Um, so that's a big mistake. Let's see, here's another one. How about harvesting our figs too early? I actually have, even though it's June 6th, I actually have some Breva that are ripening here in the Philadelphia area. And I could very easily pick one, but I'm not going to because I know they're not ripe. 
And uh, we're going on a little bit of a journey here to get to these, get to these Breba. But here's actually a, a Breba right here of Hatib de Argentil. And so this Hatib fig, what we're looking for when we harvest figs is a soft neck. We touch the body, but the figs ripen from the bottom up. So touching the bottom here in the body is not really telling. What we need to see is a neck that's very soft. And the neck is not the stem, right? The stem is this light green part here that attaches to the branch. I'm sorry, the camera just did not want to focus all of a sudden for me. So you can see that lighter green part that attaches to the branch. That's the stem. Right above that there is the neck. And so this is what we're mainly touching. We're not touching this. We're not touching this. We're touching that neck. We're not touching the stem. That will determine if the fig is indeed ripe and ready to be harvested. And that is really the only indicator. People look at the color. People look at the drops of honey that come out of the, uh, the eye. People look at cracking. Um, these are all kind of uh, visual indicators that only help you determine uh, if the fig is ripe. But to be honest with you, if you can just simply touch the neck, that's really all you need. Now, why is this so important? Well, obviously we wanna harvest fruits at their peak ripeness because every day figs in particular are on the tree, the better they taste. Now there does become a point where they spoil, so we wanna pick them before that happens. But typically all the fruits we get at the store are picked way too early. And so that's the beauty of growing food at home. You can actually harvest it when it should be harvested. Apples and, and um, well I should say, let's say stone fruits, peaches are a classic example where they're picked hard and then actually allowed to soften during shipment or when they get to the store or when you get them to your house and put them on your counter. Tomatoes are the same thing. They pick them actually green before they actually turn red. The figs are picked at 60% or 50% ripeness of what they should be when you buy them at the store. So that means you're missing 50 to 40% ripeness by buying a fig at the store. Why rob yourself of that when you're growing your own tree. It just doesn't make any sense. I see people do it all the time. Every percentage of ripeness, let's say, if we go from 60% ripe to 70% ripe, that is a big difference. And then all the way up to 100%. The longer we let them get there, the perfect they are, the more incredible the experience is that you're gonna have. And it's just pretty much across the board with every fruit that, that I've ever grown. Um, one of the other things we can talk about with containers is actually not repotting them into larger containers. Now I have really small figs that I purposely, well, I start them from cutting. And so they are in small containers to begin with, but this seems like a no brainer. And you probably would agree that this is a no brainer, but you wouldn't believe how some people just don't do this. They keep their figs in these small one gallon size pots here. This is a pretty small container and you can see it's a small tree as well. The fig will not really get larger. It'll get to a certain size, which I have some back here that are for currently for sale. And you can see that's a pretty nice size tree right there, but they won't get much bigger than that if you keep them in that size container. You need to put them in at least a three, five or seven gallon size pot this is just classic mistake in this one or even this two gallon size here. I actually like this two gallon size to get them well rooted out and then plant them in the ground in this size. But if you keep them in these one or two gallon pots here, you're just not going to see success. You're not really going to see good fruit production. You may not see any fruits at all. You're not going to see good tasting fruits either. So why waste your time? Put it in a larger pot. All right, what's on the next one here? How about um, improper winter storage for the container figs? Or improper even uh, protection from the cold. I know we mentioned with additional pruning, too much pruning, just like the cold in the winter time can cause pruning. I mean, that's basically the same thing is that the branches will die back. And so it, it's as if we did winter pruning anyway. The trees don't know the difference between if I took my pruning shears 
snipped off the branches versus the cold killing those buds that we mentioned, the apical and lateral buds. So we need to store them properly, especially the container figs here if we live in a cold place. We need to protect them properly if we live in a cold place. And so there's just a lot of things I think people do wrong. I have a whole guide on the blog, guys, if you're interested, about both of these topics, protecting in-ground figs, storing um, potted figs for the wintertime. I think the biggest mistake I see is people either don't protect them when they should. If you're gonna get down to five degrees Fahrenheit in the wintertime, you should protect your fig tree. If you're getting less than five degrees Fahrenheit, you should protect your fig tree. If your container figs are getting below 15 degrees Fahrenheit, you need to move it somewhere to keep it there all winter time so it's above 15 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, where do you put it exactly in your house? Well, I think your basement is the classic mistake I always see. So don't make that mistake. A warm, unheated, an unheated basement is warm. And so what ends up happening with the fig is if they're not kept between 15 degrees Fahrenheit and about 45 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit all winter and consistently cooler, I mean, rather you'd rather have them at 30 than 40, you know? So the warmer they get, the quicker they wake up and the quicker they're gonna wake up, you're gonna end up having figs that wake up in February or January. And then they're in this dark room, a garage, a shed. Uh, well, typically this happens in a basement and then you don't know what to do. You can't put them outside, it's too cold. You're so far away from your last frost, which we also talked about. Um, so we talked about training, we talked about watering, we talked about pruning, we talked about fertilizing. We talked about dormancy, sunburn. We talked about harvesting, repotting figs, winter storage, and late frost. The last tip here is actually choosing the wrong variety. And so all these figs that you see behind me here on the patio, in the ground as well, they're all different varieties. You know, I'm not, I'm not growing all these varieties for no reason, you know. Um, they all taste different. Um, they all have very different qualities to them. Does a Gala apple taste the same as a Granny Smith apple? No. So not all figs taste the same. Not only that, but figs are very highly subjected to the climate that they're growing in, in their final ripening stage. So although, um, you know, I have figs ripening right now that we looked at, the Hatib de Argentile we looked at, I have some Smith Brava that are ripening. Those figs right now are highly subjected to the weather around us. So if it rains, and in the beginning of this video, it actually was raining a little bit, but if it rains a lot, the figs are gonna soak up that water. Well, some varieties will soak up that water. Other, others will actually shed the water quite well. And so they'll actually lose quality. They'll uh, absorb the water, the bricks will be lowered, so the sugar content's lower, they're gonna ferment easier, they're gonna spoil easier, they're gonna mold easier. You're just gonna have worse tasting fruits. So there's some varieties that are actually way more better suited to be grown in humid places. Some varieties are way more hardier than others. So if I'm in a cold place, I want a hardy variety. Some figs will ripen very early, some figs will ripen very late. And so maybe if I'm in a zone four, I want the earliest fig I can get something like Ronde de Bordeaux or Celeste. If I'm in a you know, climate like Florida, maybe I want a really late fig so that I can avoid the monsoon season. And that's a possibility. Uh, you know, if I'm in a climate like California, I wanna have a fig that's in a really warm part of California where the temperatures are 100 while the figs are ripening and they're getting soft and they're swelling and they're changing color in that final ripening stage, like I said, the weather dramatically impacts the quality of that fruit right in that moment. So if the weather is 100 degrees, I need a fig that's gonna be able to withstand 100 degrees and not melt. Some figs actually just literally melt on the tree, it feels like, when it's that warm. So these are careful considerations and why I'm actually growing hundreds of varieties here in the Philadelphia area to find really what are the best varieties for this location and this climate. And that way I can recommend them to you guys as well. So choosing the right variety is critical. I would, don't hesitate to ask me if you're interested, you wanna figure out what, what fig you should grow for your location. Um, you can always ask your friends, you can find neighbors, whatever's doing well for them is also a good idea. And uh, in general, the, guys, those are the tips. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you don't make the same mistakes 
that I mentioned, you can avoid them. Check out the blog, hit that subscribe button guys for me, hit that like button for me, and we'll see you for the next one. Take care everyone.